from today onwards we discuss the second year mset program in the second year topics the first one is the general characters and classification and the second one is rabbit functional anatomy third one is genetics and the next one is evolution and the last part is applied biology as we observe the previous mset examination papers from the genetics we are getting 3 marks from the evolution we are getting 3 marks from aquaculture we are getting 1 mark from poultry we are getting 1 mark from the last miscellaneous topics they are stem cells cancer biology cell cycle and its regulation biotechnology from all these parts we are getting 1 mark and the last part biomedical technology we are getting one mark again it is repeating regarding the second year portion as per the previous mset examination papers from the genetics we are getting three marks from the evolution we are getting three marks from the aquaculture we are getting one mark from the poultry we are getting one mark and the stem cells cancer biology biotechnology cell cycle and its regulation from this area we are getting one mark and the last one we call it as biomedical technology from this topic we are getting one mark what are the remaining rest of the topics general characters and classification regarding the second year general characters and classification we are getting four marks what about the last two topic that is the rabbit functional anatomy from the rabbit functional anatomy 1 2 3 we are getting near about 6 marks so all together from the second year topics we are getting 20 marks now as we observe the general characters and classification regarding the first year general characters and classification we are getting 4 marks second year general characters and classification also we are getting the 4 marks. In the second year general characters, we have to discuss one we call it as the car data general characters and classification. The second one is Pisces. The third one is amphibians, reptiles, aves and mammals. As usual, while we are discussing the questions regarding each and every question, we have to discuss some important points. Now before going to discussing the questions, now as we observe the car data, in the kingdom animalia, what is the taxonomic position of car data? The taxonomic position is phylum. In order to kept one animal under car data, in order to kept one animal under car data, that animal must possess the notocard. What is the important character of car data? The presence of notocard. Then we have to discuss the Pisces. What are the important character of Pisces? That is the presence of fins. Paired fins, unpaired fins. Particularly we have to discuss the paired fins. What is the important character of amphibians? Amphibious life. The animals partly live in water and partly live on the land. What about the reptiles? What is the important character of reptiles? The reptiles creep on the land with the help of their ventral surface. Now again you have to listen. What is the important character of reptiles? This is one reptilian animal. The reptiles move or creep on the body surface with the help of ventral surface. What about the aves? They are also called the birds. What is the important character of birds? That is the presence of feathers. Now what about the mammals? What are the important characters of mammals? One is the presence of hairs and the second one we call it as mammary glands. What about the car data? The important character is notocard. And what about the important character of Pisces? That is paired fins. 
pectoral fins, pelvic fins. What about the important character of amphibians, amphibious life? Now we have to discuss one by one the questions regarding the chordata to amphibia. Now what is the first question? Now regarding the first question, notochord is persistent. Notochord is persistent throughout the life. Here, what is the meaning of persistent? Throughout the life, the notochord present. It does not undergo any changes. Now, as we observe the chordata classification, the first subphylum we call it as urochordata. Now, as we observe the urochordata, in the urochordata, only in the larval stage, particularly in the tail region, the notochord present. But in the urochordata, one exception is present, that is class larvae This is one class of urochordata. In the class larvae the notochord is persistent. That means, in the class larvae throughout the life, the notochord remains as it is. It does not undergo any changes. What about the second subphylum? That we call it as the cephalochordata. The second subphylum we call it as cephalochordata. In the cephalochordata, throughout the life, the notochord is persistent. Now, here the question is notochord remains as it is throughout the life. In the urochordata, in the class larvae throughout the life, the notochord present and does not undergo any changes. What about the cephalochordata? In the cephalochordata, throughout the life, the notochord persistent does not undergo any changes. Now here, what are the options? One is amphioxus. What is the example for the cephalochordata? Amphioxus. What about the icoplora? The example for the class larvae C A is icoplora. So based on this information, the answer is amphioxus and icoplora. Both one and two are correct. Now we go for the next question. The thickenings of intervertebral discs of adult mammals are called. Now in the phylum card data, the third subphylum we call it as the vertebrata. In the phylum card data, the third subphylum we call it as vertebrata. Now in all vertebrates, now this is the dorsal side. On the dorsal side, in the subphylum vertebrata, the notochord is replaced by the vertebral column. Again, it is repeating. As we observe the third subphylum vertebrata, in the subphylum vertebrata, this is the dorsal side. On the dorsal side, what is the present notochord? In the vertebrata, in the embryonic stage, only notochord present. But in the adult stage, it is replaced by vertebral column. Now, as we observe the vertebral column, this is vertebral column. The vertebral column consisting the vertebrae. Now, these are called the vertebrae. The vertebral column consisting the vertebrae. Now, this is vertebra. This is vertebra. This is vertebra. And this is vertebra. In the vertebral column, vertebrae are present. Between vertebrae, what are present? Intervertebral discs are present. Again, it is repeating. In the vertebral column, in between vertebrae, what are present? Intervertebral discs. Now, as we observe the intervertebral discs, in the intervertebral discs, the notochord is represented 
has vestigial rings in the mammals in the vertebral column inhibitive in vertebrae intervertebral discs are present in the intervertebral discs the notochord represented as the vestigial rings those vestigial rings are called nuclei pulposi nuclei pulposi now you observe the question what are the thickenings of intervertebral discs of adult mammals are called corpus albicans zona pellucida ganglia nuclei pulposi what is meant by nuclei pulposi the vestigial rings of the notochord now the answer is nuclei pulposi now we go for the next question the nerve cord in the cordates is derived from now as we observe the general body plan of a cordate animal now this is one cordata animal as we observe the general body plan of a cordata animal this part we call it as the nerve cord nc means nerve cord it is followed by the second one we call it as noc notochord it is followed by this one we call it as elementary canal and this star mark indicates the esophagus on the ventral side of esophagus what is present the heart now as we observe the nerve cord it is derived from ectoderm what about the notochord it is derived from the mesoderm what about the elementary canal it is derived from the endoderm now what about the heart the heart is made by cardiac muscle all muscle tissues are derived from the mesoderm now you have to observe the diagram in this diagram what are the arrangement of structures first the nerve cord derived from ectoderm followed by notochord derived from mesoderm followed by elementary canal derived from endoderm one part of elementary canal is esophagus on the ventral side of esophagus what is present the heart the heart is made by cardiac muscle tissue all muscle tissues generally derived from the mesoderm now you have to observe the question the nerve cord in cordates is derived from ectoderm suppose in the main mcd examination there is no ectoderm then we go for what type of option the neuro ectoderm both are correct the nerve cord is derived from neuro ectoderm or the ectoderm so the answer is the first option we move for the next question first amniotes first amniotes now as we observe the cordata animals particularly in the phylum cordata in case of reptiles re means reptiles av means aves and ma means mammals in reptiles aves mammals during embryonic stage extra embryonic membranes are present what are they one we call it as amnion second one we call it as chorion third one we call it as elantois and the last one we call it as yolk sac all these are extra embryonic membranes in reptiles aves mammals the amnion present if amnion present they are called amniotes now here what are the first amniotes the reptiles in reptiles aves mammals we have to observe the presence of amnion if amnion present they are called amniotes now 
what are the first amniotes the answer is mammals aves amphibians reptiles mammals amniotes aves amniotes amphibians and amniotes reptiles amniotes as we observe the order what are the first amniotes the reptiles now we go for the next question read the following statements regarding the urochordates now we have to discuss the urochordates in the phylum chordata the first sub phylum we call it as urochordata now first of all we have to read the statements read the following statements regarding urochordates what is the first one the heart is tubular now in case of urochordata as we observe the heart the heart is tubular it has no chambers now and unique in a reversal flow of blood now as we observe the urochordata for every 2 minutes for every 2 minutes the direction of blood flow varies the heart first time supplies oxygenated blood to all body parts now after 2 minutes from all the body parts the heart to receives the deoxygenated blood now as we observe the urochordata in the urochordata the heart is tubular the heart has no chambers for every 2 minutes the direction of flow of blood varies it means for the first 2 minutes oxygenated blood is passing through the blood vessels after 2 minutes in the blood vessels deoxygenated blood is passing but don't forget it in the urochordata what type of circulatory system open type of circulatory system here the blood vessels are present but they are not the true blood vessels now you are getting a doubt what is meant by true blood vessel this is a blood vessel if the blood vessel is lined inside by endothelium such type of blood vessel is called true blood vessel in case of urochordata blood vessels are present but not lined by endothelium so they are not the true blood vessels now the second statement a respiratory pigment in case of urochordata what is the respiratory pigment vanadium it is green in color you have to observe the answer what is present here in case of urochordata what is the respiratory pigment vanadium what is the color of vanadium the green now you observe the urochordates all urochordates are marine forms now the vanadium is extracted from marine water but here what is the second statement you have to observe once again a respiratory pigment having vanadium correct is extracted from fresh water but all urochordates are marine forms so the second statement is wrong now we go for the third statement in case of urochordata the excretion is by neural gland as well as nephrocytes now based on this information in urochordata the heart is tubular for every 2 minutes the blood flow reverses first statement is correct the respiratory pigment vanadium no doubt but it is extracted from marine water but not fresh water second statement is wrong third statement the excretion is by neural gland and nephrocyte now what is the correct answer for this question first and third statements now we go for the next question assertion petromyzon now you have to observe the question carefully now the petromyzon petromyzon is a vertebrate it is not a fish the body of petromyzon appears to be fish but not a fish because in the petromyzon body 
what are absent the paired fins are absent so petromyzon is not a true fish now petromyzon exhibits anadromous migration now this is the marine water and this is the fresh water now as we observe the petromyzon petromyzon is a vertebrate it is not a true fish because in the body of petromyzon the paired fins are absent during breeding season during breeding season the petromyzon migrates from fresh water to from marine water to fresh water such type of migration we call it as anadromous migration again repeating petromyzon is a vertebrate but not a fish the body appears to be fish but not the fish because the paired fins are absent during breeding season the petromyzon migrates from marine water to fresh water that migration we call it as anadromous now here petromyzon exhibits anadromous migration it migrates from river to sea but here the petromyzon migrates from marine water to fresh water so a is correct r is false so what is the correct answer for this question is the third one now we go for the next question the correct pathway of evolution of vertebrates now as we observe the evolution of vertebrates the first one we call it as pre vertebrate and it is followed by a netha while pronouncing the a is silent now it is followed by the netha now as we observe the netha here what are present the jaws now as we observe the pre vertebrate the pre vertebrates use cilia to get the food materials what about the a netha here a means absent what are you absent the jaws are you absent a netha they use the pharynx to get the food materials what about the netha in order to capture the prey they use the jaws now as we observe the evolution of vertebrates the first stage pre vertebrate the pre vertebrate animals use cilia to get the water current a netha jaws are absent they use muscular pharynx to get the water what about the netha jaws are present in order to capture the prey they use the jaws now based on this what is the correct sequence regarding the evolution you have to identify the answer one is the pre vertebrate followed by a netha followed by netha pre vertebrate a netha and netha here what are the example for the netha that is vertebrates now based on this what is the answer for this question is the answer for this question is the second one the first one is the pre vertebrate it is followed by a netha followed by netha what are the examples for the netha the vertebrates so based on this information the second option is correct now we go for the next question assertion cyclostomes are considered as extant a netha now as we observe the cyclostomes this is the body of the cyclostomes this is the body of cyclostomes in the body of cyclostomes this one we call it as the buccal funnel bf means the buccal funnel now this one we call it as the circular mouth now as we observe the cyclostomes they are present day living so called extant 
what is meant by extant present day living but in the cyclostomes what are the absent jaws so they are called jawless now here you have to observe cyclostomes are considered as present day living jawless vertebrates the assertion is correct reason the cyclostomes are have a ventral mouth now you have to observe as we observe the body on the ventral side of buccal funnel what is present circular mouth but the mouth is not bounded by this is upper jaw and this is lower jaw in case of jawless vertebrates the upper and lower jaws are absent now the reason cyclostomes have a ventral mouth but without jaws due to the absence of jaws called anatha present day living extend now what is the correct answer for this question you have to identify the answer for this question is both are correct or he explains a now we go for the next question direction of flow of blood in the dorsal blood vessel of chordates now as yes, we observe the introductory part of chordates in chordates this one we call it as the four chambered heart and this is the right atrium the left atrium the right ventricle the left ventricle now this one we call it as the left systemic arch this is the left systemic arch the left systemic arch continuous backwards as the dorsal aorta now here you have to identify once again the question direction of flow of blood in the dorsal blood vessel here what is the dorsal blood vessel the dorsal aorta the dorsal aorta is called the dorsal blood vessel in the dorsal blood vessel the blood flows from anterior to posterior this is anterior and posterior end here you are getting one doubt from all body parts of the body the blood is collected by the post caval vein now this is called the post caval vein now as we observe the post caval vein it is considered as the ventral blood vessel in the post caval vein how the blood flows from posterior end to anterior end in case of dorsal blood vessel anterior to posterior in case of post caval vein posterior to anterior so you observe the diagram in these blood vessels the flow of blood is reverse now you observe the question direction of flow of blood in the dorsal blood vessel of chordates anterior to posterior the answer is the second one now we go for the next question a retrogressive metamorphosis is seen in now as we observe the subphylum urocardata in the subphylum urocardata one class we call it as acdaca you have to observe what is going on in the subphylum urocardata one class is acdaca now in the class acdaca the larval form is the acdn tadpole larva this is acdn tadpole larva now you observe this tadpole larva this is acdn tadpole larva in the larval stage what is present the nerucard present the notocard present the gill slits all chordata characters are present in the larval stage now this larva undergoes metamorphosis because of the metamorphosis the larva lost the chordata characters lost chordata characters and after metamorphosis it becomes adult now here the adult is the degenerate adult why 
here we call the adult is degenerate because in the urocardata in the larval stage cardata characters are present the larva undergoes metamorphosis during the metamorphosis the larva lost all cardata characters and modified into adult as we observe the adult in the adult what type of characters are absent the notochord absent the nerve cord absent only what are present the pharyngeal glycerides so that such a type of metamorphosis we call it as retrogressive metamorphosis where we have to observe the retrogressive metamorphosis class acdacia now what are the examples for the class acdacia erdamania and botrylus now you observe the options amphioxus balanoglossus petromyzon erdamania what is the answer here is the erdamania now we go for the next question vertebrates without genital ducts now this is one important repeated main mct bit vertebrates without genital ducts now what are the genital ducts what are the genital ducts the genital ducts are vasa deferentia and the second one we call it as the ov ducts now here again you observe the question vertebrates without genital ducts now what are the vertebrates one is astrocodermy the second one is cyclostomes and the third one is pisces amphibians reptiles aves and mammals among vertebrates where the genital ducts are absent now the answer is kept in the box now as we observe the cyclostomes astrocodermy cyclostomes pisces amphibians reptiles aves and mammals all these are the vertebrates in these vertebrates only in the cyclostomes what are absent the genital ducts now related to this question you have to observe the second one now as we observe the cephalocard data now as we observe the cephalocard data in the cephalocard data again what are absent the genital ducts are absent now what is the difference what are the cardates in which genital ducts are absent cephalocard data what are the vertebrates genital ducts are absent cyclostomes based on this information you have to identify vertebrates without genital ducts belong to one is aneta second one is nathostomata third ichthyopsida fourth sauropsida now you have to identify the answer here there is no cyclostomes but here what is the correct answer the cyclostomes in the cyclostomes what are absent jaws are absent so the cyclostomata come under aneta so that here what is the correct answer for this question cyclostomata come under what type of category aneta what is meant by aneta the jaws are absent now we go for the next question icoplura belongs to the class now as we observe the urocardata in the urocardata one example is acdaca the second one is taliaca and the third one is larvaca now what is the example for the larvaca icoplura now as we observe the larvaca this is the only cardate animal again you have to observe this is the only cardates in which least number of glycerides number of glycerides 2 and in the class larvaca throughout the life what is persistent the notochord but in the class acdaca taliaca 
the notochord present only in the larval stage. But in this class, throughout the life, the notochord remains as it is. Now, what is the answer for this question? Icoplura come under the class Larvacea. Now, we go for the next question. Number of semicircular canals present in slime eel. Now, again, you observe the question. Number of semicircular canals. Now, this one we call it as the external ear. Again, you observe this is the external ear. The external ear is followed by internal ear. Sorry, middle ear. The middle ear is followed by the internal ear. Now, in the internal ear, three semicircular canals are present. Now, students, you have to observe the diagram. Now, in the internal ear, three semicircular canals are present. Here, what is the question? Number of semicircular canals present in slime eel. What is the other name of slime eel? That is the hagfish. Now, the second one is lamprey. This one we call it as lamprey. It is also called the petromyzon. We know very well. And the third one is earliest nathostomes. That is acanthody. Acanthody means nothing but a type of fishes. Now, in a hagfish, how many semicircular canals? One. In lamprey, how many semicircular canals? Two. In fishes, don't forget it. In Pisces, amphibians, reptiles, aves, mammals, including the man. In the internal ear, how many semicircular canals are present? Three. Now, based on this information, what is the correct answer for this question? The first option. One, two and three semicircular canals. Now, we go for the next question. Now, the list one. Ornithology. The second one is herpetology. The third one is mammalogy. And the fourth one is the ichthyology. Now, what is meant by ornithology? The study of birds. What is the herpetology? The study of amphibians and reptiles. What is the mammalogy? The study of mammals. What about the ichthyology? The study of fishes. Now, we move for the list to two. First one, first jaw-bearing vertebrates. What are the first jawed vertebrates? What are the first jawed vertebrates? The first jawed vertebrates are the Pisces. They are also called the fishes. Now, the study of Pisces or fishes or first jawed bear vertebrates, that we call it as the ichthyology. What about the second option in the list to two? First, successful terrestrial vertebrates. Now, the reptiles, the aves and mammals. Now, all these are terrestrial vertebrates. What are the first successful terrestrial vertebrates? Reptiles. Because as we observe the reptiles egg, this we call it as egg. Inside the egg, what is present? The embryo present. For the development of embryo, what is required? The water is required. The water is in the form of amniotic fluid. In case of reptiles, aves, for the development of embryo inside the egg, what is present? The water in the form of amniotic fluids. What are the first terrestrial? What are the first true terrestrial vertebrates? Reptiles. So, the first successful terrestrial vertebrates study is the herpetology. And now, the third one, bipedal aerial vertebrates. Now, as we observe the body of a bird, in the body of bird, how many hind limbs are present? 
only one pair of hind limbs. Now these are called bipedal. Don't forget it. Human being is also bipedal. The bird is also bipedal. But here the body of birds is covered and protected by feathers. Whereas the mammal's body is covered and protected by hairs. Now regarding the list to two. Bipedal aerial vertebrates. Nothing but birds. Their study we call it as ornithology. Now in the evolution the top chair is always occupied by mammals particularly in the mammals the top chair in the evolution is occupied by the man because he is highly an intelligent animal now here highly advanced intelligent vertebrates are nothing but the mammals the study of mammals we call it as mammalogy based on this information the correct answer for this question is the third option. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. In land vertebrates. Now you have to observe. What are the land vertebrates? Reptiles, aves and mammals. Now prayer to reptiles. What are present? Amphibians. Prayer to amphibians. What are present? The Pisces. The Pisces are all aquatic. Fishes live in water. What about the amphibians? They partly live in water and partly live on the land. Now, reptiles, aves, mammals, they are terrestrial vertebrates. In case of reptiles, aves, mammals, only in the embryonic stage, what are present? The gills are present. But the gills are rudimentary. What is meant by rudimentary? Vestigial. What is meant by vestigial? The non-functional. Vestigial means non-functional. So in reptiles, aves, mammals, at all stages, what type of respiration is present? The pulmonary respiration. What is meant by pulmonary respiration? It is brought by lungs. But as we observe the fishes, what are present? The gills are present. In the larval stages of amphibians, what are present? The gills are present. Now, from the amphibians, what are evolved? Reptiles. From one side, from the reptiles, what are evolved? Aves. On other side, from the reptiles, what are evolved? The mammals. Now, here, the gills are transferred into the lungs. Now you observe the question. Assertion. In land vertebrates, the gills leads became vestigial and restricted to only embryonic stages. Because in these animals, only in the embryonic stage gills are present, but they are rudimentary or non-functional or vestigial. Why? The reason is, the functions of gill slits is shifted to lungs in terrestrial vertebrates. What are the true terrestrial vertebrates? Reptiles, aves and mammals. Because they are terrestrial, they present on the land. On the land, the gills do not work. So the gills are transferred into lungs. So that in reptiles, aves, mammals, at all stages, what type of respiration is seen? Pulmonary respiration brought by lungs. So that here A and R are correct. R explains A. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. Amicardates are connecting link between non-cardates and cardates. Now you observe. This one we call it as the non-cardates. What are the non-cardates? In non-cardates, no notochord. Now these are the cardates. What are the cardates? In cardates, what is present? The notochord. In non-cardates, what is absent? The notochord absent. Here NOC means notochord. Here notochord absent. Here notochord present. Now, what is the connecting link between 
non chordates and hemichordates that we call it as the hemichordata now the students as we observe the hemichordata in the beginning hemichordata was kept under the phylum chordata but later the hemichordata was separated because in the body of hemichordata also what is absent the notochord absent now here one example for the non chordates is echinodermata one example one example now as we observe the chordates according to the according to the gear strong now as we observe according to the gear strong according to the gear strong the chordates might have been evolved from the auricularia larva of echinodermata now as we observe the echinodermata what type of muscle phosphagen is present one is the creatine phosphate and phosphoarginine students again you have to observe in some echinodermata what are the muscle phosphagens creatine phosphate and phosphoarginine in case of chordates the creatine phosphate in case of hemichordates creatine phosphate and phosphoarginine now based on this information in the hemichordata creatine phosphate phosphoarginine present in case of chordates only what is present the creatine phosphate now in case of non chordates one example echinodermata here what is present in some echinodermata creatine phosphate and phosphoarginine so based on this information the hemichordata is considered as the connecting link between non chordates and chordates because like that of chordates it has creatine phosphate like that of non chordates it has phosphoarginine now here the reason hemichordates have both arginine and creatine phosphate so both are correct or he explains a now we go for the next question branchial heart is seen in fishes now as we observe the fishes in the body of fishes the shape of heart is s shape now in the heart how many chambers are present two chambers this is atrium and this is the ventricle and these are the gill slits and these are the body parts now you observe in case of fishes always the heart receives what type of blood impure blood students again you have to observe in fishes the heart always receives impure blood from the body parts so that the heart is called venous heart now the blood enters into atrium from the atrium the blood enters into ventricle from the ventricle the blood goes to gill slits now here the blood is purified now from the gill slits what type of blood is supplied to body parts that is oxygenated blood now you observe in case of fishes always the heart supplies blood to gill slits so it is called branchial heart because the gill slits are also called branchial clefts now here assertion branchial heart is seen in fishes reason the flow of the blood from the heart is only towards the gill slits now based on this information what is the correct answer is both are correct and r explains the a